Into a world of darkness comes our most prized possession, sight. But sight is useless without its important partner, light. We were born into a world of light. Light is cheap. Sight is priceless. Ever since we were babies, we've taken our eyes for granted. As a result, we give little thought to the importance of light to our eyes. Nature supplies an abundance of light outdoors. But we have moved indoors, where your light is what you make it. Good lighting is just as important to the eye in seeing as it is to the camera in the taking of a picture. In fact, the eye is much like the camera in its operation. Light passes through the pupil and blends to the retina. Just as light passes through the diaphragm and blends to the film of the camera. The iris of the eye corresponds to the diaphragm of the camera, the opening or closing of which regulates the amount of light allowed to enter. Let's borrow this fellow's head for a moment and observe how this impression we call seeing is created. Joe, look at this clock. Light strikes the object. The reflected light rays enter the eye and fall on the retina. The picture is then flashed to the brain. Television indeed. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But really, it isn't quite that simple. When Joe turns away from us to look at the clock, an object much closer to him, the muscles of his eyes automatically go into operation to refocus the lens for the change in distance. The eyes are relaxed when looking at distant objects, but most present-day tasks of seeing are performed within arm's length or for long periods of time, and the eyes are no longer relaxed. It is for visual tasks such as these, be they in school, factory, office, store, or in the home, that our eyes need all the help we can give them by correcting these lighting faults. Insufficient light, glare, sharp contrast, and harsh shadows. Providing sufficient light should be our first step toward better light, better sight. Why not give our eyes the same consideration we give the camera? While we wouldn't think of trying to take a picture in such dim light, simply because we know that a bad picture would be the result. Of course, no harm would be done to the camera, but harm can be done to our eyes when we use them with too little light. Yet, we'll come home, settle ourselves in an easy chair to read the paper in lighting like this. We might mutter a bit, but we go ahead and read anyway. Suppose we go inside our eye and see how a newspaper appears. Phew! No wonder our eyes become strained. Now let's see what happens when we have more light. See how much clearer it is? And easy on the eye. Next, eliminate glare. A clear picture cannot be taken with a bright light shining directly into the lens of a camera, as glare results in a picture that appears washed out and fogged. Neither can the eye render a clear vision with a bright light within the field of view. We squint, the pupil contracts to protect the eye from the glare, and we have the same fogged result. A bright light shining in our eyes actually hinders vision. To prove this for yourself at home, place an unshaded lamp in front of a picture on the wall. Then stand off. The picture is fogged. Now, block out the direct glare, and note the clear details of the picture. But unshaded light bulbs are not the only cause of glare. If the light source is placed in front of your work, the light bounces off the paper and into your eyes. By simply moving the light to one side, the reflected glare bounces away from the eyes. Eliminate glare and reduce eye strain. Our last step is the elimination of sharp contrasts and harsh shadows. The photographer knows better than this, Yet we'll sit and abuse our eyes with all the light coming from one spot, leaving the rest of the room in darkness. This forces the eye to simultaneously try to adjust itself to both the brightness of the book and the gloom of the surroundings. 
causing eye muscle fatigue. Now, how to correct these lighting faults? First, we need some method of measuring light. The standard candle is the basis for measuring the level of lighting. The amount of light falling from a candle on a perpendicular surface, one foot away, is termed a foot candle. Nature supplies an abundance of light outdoors. For example, on a bright summer day in the shade of the porch, there are often 500 foot candles of light. While in the shade of the old apple tree, we find about 1,000. And in the bright sunlight at noon, as high as 10,000 foot candles. Then we come indoors and provide sometimes as low as from two to five foot candles of lighting. Just because we are able to see does not mean that we have sufficient light. So to protect our eyesight, lighting experts have recommended the foot candles of light desirable for the various tasks of seeing. Since the human eye is a poor judge of the amount of light needed, a light meter is supplied that will measure your lighting and foot candles in a very simple manner. To determine if enough light is provided, hold the light meter on the object you want to see. The light strikes a light-sensitive cell and registers the amount of light that is provided. If you're reading a newspaper, your eyes will require at least 30-foot candles because the type is smaller and the paper grayer than in a well-printed book. Likewise, more light is needed for sewing than for reading. It is not just the amount of light, but also the quality of the lighting that eliminates glare and harsh shadows. No single light source can do this job alone. It is the combination of fixtures, floor, and table lamps, carefully selected and arranged, that brings charm and eye comfort to the room. Just as important as using the right kind of lamps and fixtures is the size and type of bulbs we use in them. Yet in the average home, four out of every five bulbs in use are the wrong size for better sight. Because there are so many different types and sizes of light bulbs, lighting specialists have worked out guides to help us select the correct bulb for each lamp and fixture and thus avoid the many evils of bad lighting. Few of us realize that other parts of the body, not just the eyes alone, are involved in the act of seeing and the prolonged use of the eyes under bad lighting conditions might cause eye strain, which may result in irritableness, blurred vision, severe headache, an annoying increase in the rate of blinking, tenseness, and nervousness, digestive disturbances, and dizziness. Well, we admit this might be a slight exaggeration, but the evils of bad lighting can disappear when sufficient light is provided. Glare, sharp contrasts, and harsh shadows are eliminated, allowing us to enjoy the many benefits of better light, improved energy and health, clearer vision, better disposition, cheerful appearance, and the great satisfaction that comes with beauty of surroundings. Yes, your light is what you make it. And remember, light is cheap. Sight is priceless.